Let me share my screen. Let me know whenever you can see it. We can you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, guys, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So, uh, so last time we, uh, we had in our contemplation uh, the, uh, the parable of the mustard seed um, in, uh, in a small series of uh, the parables of the kingdom uh, in uh, chapter 13 uh, in the Gospel of St. Matthew. And we we said that the the, uh, the 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 Lord Christ started these two parables at, right after the parable of the sower and the parable of the wheat and the tares, and uh, and these two parables especially were were parables given uh, by him to to give hope since uh, since uh, after telling the parable of the sower and the parable of the wheat and the tares. Uh, seemed to be a bit difficult on the hearing of the disciples. How how it is uh, so hard and difficult. Uh, one quarter of the of the of the land was only good, and then even that one quarter, half of it was filled with tares. So so the disciples were wondering, uh, you know, who can be saved, and how how is it that why is it that it's so difficult, Lord, and um, and so and so on and so forth. But, but Christ gave them these two uh, parables to give them hope and to give them uh, the trust in the salvation of God. So the parable of the mustard seed was this very small seed that can grow and be a big tree and uh, bring all the birds of heaven to it. And, uh, and we did a little bit of contemplation on that as to how, you know, something small can touch your heart and then grow to be something very big by the grace of God. Uh, and uh, if we are faithful. Uh, in doing so. So the second parable that we wanted to go over is the parable of the leaven. And this one comes right after uh, the parable of the mustard seed. Uh, it reads in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 13 and verse 33, another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. So this parable uh, differs a little bit from the parable of the mustard seed in that it talks about the eternal transformation. So we saw in the parable of the mustard seed how a very small seed can grow and be a big tree that is, uh, you know, very beautiful and uh, it, it would, uh, you know, everyone would benefit from it and it would be very apparent uh, on the outside and uh, very fruitful. But this one talks more about the internal transformation of the work of the grace and the work of the kingdom of heaven. And just like Christ said that, the, uh, that behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So the kingdom of heaven starts within each and every one of us in our hearts. And, and the work of it is very much hidden, just like that leaven. So, uh, this internal work of the kingdom, um, it, it has a very powerful effect, and that's the effect of transformation. Um, it's, it's very small. The leaven uh, is, are pretty much very small like powders, but yet it is a very powerful force which trans transforms, transforms the heart. And this is what this is. This is the. This talks a lot about the power of transformation, and the power of transformation in our lives. This is the true miracle that the kingdom of heaven uh, does to each and every one of us. And this is the true miracle that Christ, uh, in His work of salvation and and work of redemption, has done to us. That uh, the miracle is not, you know for God to change our, the circumstances that are around us or to do, uh, you know, great miracles of healing or great miracles of changing things uh, that are around us uh, so that it can, you know, make our lives maybe a little bit easier or show the glory of God. Yes, Christ did perform a lot of miracles when he was on earth. But the biggest miracle of all 
is actually transforming us and is actually transforming our hearts. And that's why, you know, when, when, when we were just reading the, the miracle of the, of, the, um, of the paralytic man that was let down by his friends, Christ, the first thing he told him is, your sins are forgiven. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't start by performing the actual miracle, but he started, by, he started by saying that his sins are forgiven. And that's because this is the work of Christ. The work of Christ is that he gives us this renewal this new nature that is within us and that is what the, this leaven is uh is a symbol of uh you know it, it it it's the biggest miracle is is not uh for god to uh to take away any suffering or any pain that we might be going uh, undergoing in our lives because suffering and pain is very much evident and will very much happen uh, to each and every one of us but the miracle, the actual miracle is for God to transform our hearts and to uh, reform it into a way where we can live a thankful life, where we can live above these trials and above these sufferings and above that pain and, and rejoice in him uh, despite of anything that might be happening to us. Because our true joy comes from, uh, you know, this kingdom of heaven that is growing within us. And that is why we see that the first miracle uh, that Christ actually performed on earth was the miracle of the wedding of Cana of, Cana of Galilee. And that's why, uh, and, the, and, and the miracle of the wedding of Cana of Galilee is a miracle of transformation. It's the transformation uh, of water into wine. And that's that, that is what, what Christ is telling us, that this is what I have come to do. I have come so that uh, you, you, your, uh, your hearts may be turned from hearts of stone to hearts of flesh, like we read in, in the book of Ezekiel. Um, so this, this parable talks very much about the power of transformation. The power of transformation uh, works very quietly and very hiddenly, uh, just like that leaven. When that leaven uh, you know, changes the, 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 the dough uh, into like, uh, and makes it bigger, right? And makes it like bigger and, and fluffs it up. Uh, it works very quietly. We don't see it like, no, no one sees this leaven, you know, making a lot of noise when it's, when it's working or, you know, uh, uh, making a lot of movements. But it, it, it's hidden in that dough. It's hidden in our hearts, and it doesn't make a lot of noise. And that's the work of the kingdom of heaven, that, that we shouldn't, uh, that we should also be very mindful of and, 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 uh, and be very focused on, that the work of the kingdom and the work of grace should work very hiddenly in our hearts. It shouldn't make a lot of noise. It shouldn't uh, draw a lot of attraction. It shouldn't, uh, you know, say that or boast in front of others. It, it shouldn't be seeking uh, praise of the people, but it should work very quietly and very hiddenly. It's a very personal and hidden transformation uh, and relationship with God. That's why, you know, on the Sermon on the Mount, Christ always says, uh, your father who sees you in secret, and that's the secret work of that kingdom. Okay, um, the, the, but, but when we read about the leaven uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the leaven is generally a symbol of evil in the Old Testament. That's why we, we read in the book of Exodus, for example, about the, uh, the seven days uh, after the Passover feast of the unleavened bread that, you know, all the Israelites shouldn't be eating any leaven in their houses and they shouldn't have any leaven in their houses. They should eat unleavened bread. So leaven resembled evil in the Old Testament or sin, uh, except in one feast, which is the Feast of Weeks or the 50 days. In Leviticus 23, 17, it says, then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. So why is it Christ that uh, why is it that Christ is using the leaven in this instance? It's because that whatever that may seem evil for us, God can turn into good. 
just like just like the very work of salvation whatever that was evil and whatever plotting that happened against christ and uh, against christ to kill him on the cross and to crucify him turned out to be uh, the 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 most uh, you know the, the greatest work of good uh, in in the history of mankind and it could have been you know to the bare eye uh, a very you know harsh and and unjust evil but God can always turn uh, something that is uh, very evil that can may seem very evil into something that is good and great so that's why the leaven in the in the Old Testament was was a symbol of evil but it's telling us now in the new testament and in the testament of the grace that uh, we we can trust in the work of god in which he can turn any anything that might be bad or harsh or painful or uh, you know suffering into something that is good and great also that woman that was uh that that the that the parable was talking about is a symbol of the church. Uh, you know, the woman in, in, in the Bible or throughout the Bible uh, can sometimes be a symbol of the church. And the church here uh, and the bread draws our eyes to the very uh, beautiful mystery of, of the Eucharist, uh, of the uh, of the um, of, uh, of of the Eucharist and of the communion of of the body and the blood of Christ. So the woman here, uh, being the church, is presenting this leavened bread, is presenting this bread of life to us uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a mysterious way, in a sacramental way, which is the sacrament of the Eucharist. Then it says that it's, it was three measures. Uh, the, the, the three measures uh, of that meal uh, is a symbol of the resurrection because the number three is a symbol of the resurrection uh, you know uh, as, as we all know and it can also be symbolizing man or human uh, which is uh, you know three co three different parts or three different components which is the soul the body and the spirit also, it reminds us of a, a meal that uh, was prepared in the, in, in the Old Testament. And that's the meal by Abraham. When he, uh, when he saw the three men that visited him, and, uh, and this was uh, probably one of the appearances of, 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 of Christ in the Old Testament, uh, which he said to, to Sarah, his wife, Quickly make ready, ready three meals of fine meal, uh, knit it and make make cakes. So uh, this was also the, the number three. Also, uh, always signifies the resurrection of the Lord. And just like that leaven was hidden in in, in the meal or was hidden in the dough, Christ is all, always uh, also hidden in the books. And and uh, and Christ. Is the one that gives us filling because he is he is the the bread of life. So the kingdom of heaven here is is hidden uh, is hidden through uh, the, the 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 work of Christ and is hidden is hidden in each and every one of our, our hearts uh, and is able to transform us. So this this parable is talking about the great uh, work of transformation in our lives and. Uh, and it draws our attention also to uh, John chapter 6, where Christ talks about the bread of life, saying, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So this, this is very much what can sustain us, and this 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 very much what we have our filling in, which is the true bread of life, and it's Christ. And this also gives us the responsibility that we we should be that leaven to the world. Um, there was uh, there was a, a story once told about missionaries that went to Africa, and uh, these missionaries, when they went, they, they they prepared the trip, they prepared the mission trip, and uh, they they brought with them, you know, all the books and all the material and. Uh, you know, they, they prepared these uh, great conferences and retreats. 
But one of one one African girl told them, "Look, this like what you're bringing to us is good and great, but what we really need here, we need a Christian family, a true Christian family that can come and live among us, and from there we can. This is how we would learn how to live a Christ-like life, or this is how we can live like Christians, like Christians do." Yes, what you're bringing to, to us is all these teachings, but we need to see and we need to witness firsthand uh, how can we live as Christians. And this is, this is the responsibility. This is, this is a responsibility that's laid on each and every one of us, that through us being that leaven, we can, uh, we can leaven the whole meal. We can leaven all the people that, is, that are around us and show them how is it uh, that we can live and testify and witness to the goodness of, of the Lord as Christians. All right, uh, I'm going to say this part real quick in Arabic. So, the first time we talked about the Malakot in the Amsilit al-Malakot in the Matta 13, we can, the first question, the Lord of the Messiah said to the Amiz, المثل الزارع ومثل الحنطه والزوان والمثلين دول كانوا جاي صعبين قوي على مسامع التلاميذ ومسامع الناس فسالوه يا رب من يخلص لان هو اتكلم على ارض واحده هي اللي كانت الارض الجيده من اربع اراضي فده كان الربع وبعدين حتى الارض دي كان فيها زوان ما كانتش ما كانتش كلها جيده فزي ما تقولوا يعني التلاميذ جالهم شويه احباط وقالوا له من 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 يخلص يا رب يعني الموضوع باين ان هو صعب قوي علينا وانت حتى ابتديت بدايه صغيره قوي وابتديت ب 12 واحد مش متعلمين وعارف ان واحد منهم هيخونك فمن يخلص يا رب فالمسيح اوام جاوبهم بالمثلين دول اللي هم مثل حبه الخردل ومثل الخميره مثل حبة الخردل اللي اتكلمنا عليه المرة اللي فاتت قلنا إن حبة الخردل الصغيرة دي بتكبر وتبقى شجرة كبيرة وتلم حواليها الطيور وتتآوى الطيور في أغصانها وده عمل الملكوت عمل الملكوت اللي هو بيبتدي من حاجة صغيرة جدا جايز بيبتدي من حاجة صغيرة إحنا سمعناها أو مزمور إحنا مثلا حفظناه أو ترنيمة عجبتنا أو آية عجبتنا أو أي حاجة صغيرة لمست قلوبنا بس خدناها <تصفيق> بأمانة وعملنا يعني خدناها بأمانة وتاجرنا فيها بأمانة فصارت شجرة كبيرة تتآوى كل الطيور وقلنا وقلنا أمثلة زي الأمبطونيوس وزي قديس بولس وكذا مثل للناس اللي هي ابتدت بدايات صغيرة لكن أصبحت قدسين عظماء جدا في الملكوت فده كان أول مثل اللي هو حبة الخردل تاني مثل اللي هو المثل بتاع الخميرة مثل الخميرة في إنجيل متى صحة 13 وعدد 33 بيقول قال لهم مثلا آخر يشبه ملكوت السماوات خميرة أخذتها امرأة وخبأتها في ثلاثة أكيال دقيق حتى اختمر الجميع فمثل الخميرة بيتكلم على العمل الداخلي للملكوت فلو كان المثل بتاع حبة الخردل بيتكلم على العمل الخارجي وازاي ان 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 بالعمل بأمانة او بحاجة صغيرة قوي ربنا بيبارك فيها فتصير شيء عظيم وشيء يعني الناس تشوفه وده العمل الخارجي، العمل الخارجي ليه ثمار كمان ان الناس بتشوفه ده عمل جميل لكن العمل اللي بتاع المثل ده بيتكلم على العمل الداخلي للملكوت ان ازاي ان الخميره بتخمر العجينه كلها في في في, في عمل داخلي سري عجيب وده ده ده الفرق بين المثلين دول مثل الخميره بيتكلم على قوه التغيير العظيمه اللي بتحصل للانسان بتحصل للانسان من خلال الملكوت اللي جوه الانسان ان زي زي ما السيد المسيح قال هو ده ملكوت الله داخلكم فالعمل ده هو العمل المعجزي الحقيقي لعمل الملكوت والعمل المعجزي الحقيقي اللي ربنا 
بي بيشتغل مع مع كل واحد فينا ان المعجزه الحقيقيه مش ان ربنا يغير الظروف اللي حوالينا او مش يغير مش ان هو يعمل معجزات شفاء عظيمه او يعمل اعمال عظيمه ننبهر منها مش هو ده العمل الاول اللي ربنا عايزه مننا لكن العمل الحقيقي والمعجزه الحقيقيه هي تغيير القلوب هي زي ما قديس بولس بيقول في روميا تغيروا عن اشكالكم بتجديد اذهانكم ان هو ده اللي ربنا محتاجه مننا هو ده اللي ربنا جه علشان يعمله معانا ان احنا بدل ما يطير الظروف اللي حوالينا يغيرنا احنا علشان نبقى فوق الظروف ونبقى فوق اي مشاكل او اي ضيقات او اي او اي تجارب واحنا جايز بنكون بنمر بيها وعلشان كده احنا في حياتنا بنمر بالام كتير لكن ربنا بيقول لنا انا قد غلبت العالم وافرحوا كل حين عندما تقعون في في تجارب متنوعه فالعمل المعجزي الحقيقي هو عمل تغيير القلوب هو عمل جاي صغير زي الخميره الصغيره دي لكن عمل قوي جدا 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 قوه التغيير دي قوه قويه جدا وقوه معجزيه عظيمه هو ده اللي ربنا عايزه مننا علشان كده السيد المسيح لما جه اول معجزه عملها كانت معجزه عرس القانا الجليل اللي هي معجزه كان فيها تغيير وكان فيها تحويل للماده ولطبيعه الماده اللي هي طبيعة المية تتحول لطبيعة خمر أو طبيعة نبيت فهو ده, هو ده العمل المعجزي الحقيقي الخميرة بتعمل في هدوء وبتعمل في خفاء وبتدفن فالعمل التغيير الحقيقي بتاع الملكوت لازم يعمل جوانا في خفاء ويكون بيعمل في هدوء ما بيعملش ما بيقدرش يعمل يعمل في 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 الضوضاء او في 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 الدوشه الكتيره او في ان احنا نجري ورا مديح الناس او نجري ورا ان الناس تشوفنا او ان الناس تعرف احنا بنعمل ايه لكن هو عمل بيعمل في الخفاء زي ما السيد المسيح قال في 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 الموعظه على الجبل ابوك الذي يرى في الخفاء هو هو يجازيك على نيه وهو عمل يدفن كمان زي ما الخميرة بتدفن جوه العجين احنا كمان لازم ندفن زي الحبة حبة الحنطة أو حبة الخردة اللي احنا اتكلمنا عليها المرة اللي فاتت وفي انكار ذات علشان علشان العمل ده يكون فيه بركة ويكون فيه نعمة طيب الخميرة كانت رمز للشر في العهد القديم ليه السيد المسيح هنا استخدمها في انها تكون آه، تكون حاجة آه، بت، بتمثل الملكوت ده علشان أي حاجة كانت شر في العهد القديم أو أي حاجة كانت شر عامة ربنا قادر إن هو يغيرها لأنها تكون عمل خير عظيم وأكبر دليل على كده هو دليل الصليب نفسه إن هو آه، اللي كان باين للناس أو اللي كان باين إن ده شر عظيم جدا إن ال- ال- رؤساء الشعب والكهنة و- واليهود كانوا بيتأمروا عشان يصطبوا المسيح وعشان يقتلوه وهو كان بريء ان ده كان جايز باين لنا ان هو عمل شر كبير قوي لكن المسيح غيره وخلاه اعظم عمل يتم في تاريخ البشرية بخلاص الناس كمان المرأة هنا المرأة هنا بترمز للكنيسة المرأة يعني في, 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 في كذا حتة في الكتاب المقدس بترمز للكنيسة المرأة اللي هي بتقدم العجينة دي اللي هي فيها الخميرة زي ما الكنيسة بالظبط بتقدم لنا جسد ودم المسيح فده كمان ممكن يكون رمز لخبز الحياة خبز الحياة اللي هو بيدي شبع وهو السيد المسيح وحده وكمان اللي بيعمل في خفاء وبيعمل في في, في في سر عظيم زي سر الإفخارستية اللي احنا بنتناول منه زي اللي بيتقدم لنا على المسبح كل يوم كمان التلات أكيال هنا رمز للقيامة ورمز كمان للإنسان لأن الإنسان جسد وروح ونفس 
وكمان الثلاث اكيال بيفكرونا بال 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 بالوليمه اللي ابراهيم قدمها للثلاث رجال اللي قولوا وكان منهم ظهور لظهورات السيد المسيح وقال لساره روحي اعملي ثلاث اكيال من من الدقيق وبعدين ذبح لهم اللحمه يعني لل لل للمائدة زي ما الخميرة كمان كانت مستخبية جوة العجينة دي كمان بنشوف انها ان السيد المسيح ان دي بترمز للسيد المسيح ان هو كان مستخبي جوة الكتب مستخبي جوة كتب نبوات العهد القديم وده زي ما كان بعد كده المسيح تمم هذه النبوات وزي ما ان العجينة دي ممكن تشبعنا شبع جسدي المسيح هو الوحيد اللي قادر يشبعنا الشبع الروحي فده يفكرنا دايما بيوحنا اصحاح ستة وعدد خمسة وثلاثين لما المسيح بيقول انا هو خبز الحياة من يقبل الي فلا يجوع ومن يؤمن بي فلا يعطش ابدا كمان الـ 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 الملكوت هو عمل العمل الخفي للملكوت ده عمل مسؤولية علينا كلنا على كل واحد فينا كمسيحي لأن العمل ده هو عمل اللي بي بيعكس محبة ربنا بيعكس محبة ربنا للإنسان إحنا لما بنختبر محبة ربنا لازم نعكسها إحنا كمان ففي قصة في قصة لطيفة لناس كانوا مبشرين راحوا إرسالية تبشيرية في أفريقيا وجابوا معاهم كتب وتعاليم وحضروا برامج و بس واحدة بنت أفريقية لما شافتهم قالت لهم إحنا كل اللي أنتوا جايبينه ده جميل جدا وحلو جدا لكن اللي إحنا محتاجينه أكتر هو إن إحنا نشوف إزاي عائلة أو أسرة مسيحية تيجي تعيش في وسطنا علشان نعرف إزاي إن إحنا نعيش حياة مسيحية أو نعيش زي المسيحيين فهي دي المسؤولية الموضوع على كل واحد فينا إن إحنا نكون زي الخميرة دي اللي هي بتخمر العجين كله ونكون إزاي إن إحنا بمحبتنا للناس بنعكس محبة ربنا اللي هي جوه قلوبنا فنكون خميرة تخمر العجين كله وتخمر وتنشر رسالة الملكوت لكل واحد فينا لإلهنا كل مجد وكرامة لا بدأنا Thank you very much, Abuna, and thank you, everyone.